just begin by introducing all of us because we are right now just faces that we don't know. Um, I am Mona Sidvai and I, for the last 20 years I have been a teacher. Before that I worked in various segments of the urban poor in Bombay with women and children before becoming a teacher. So in the 20 year journey, this is my 11th year as a principal and when somebody asked me how did anybody teach you to become a principal? I said, nobody taught me anything. I was a teacher on Monday and on Tuesday I became a principal and I stood on this diving board and I looked at the water ahead of me and I said, okay, I have to jump. So I'm either going to drown or I'm going to swim. And I decided that I have to do everything I can in order to swim to get where I'm going to be. I don't know how many of you felt that because, you know, when I look at other people and they talk about training as leaders and inputs and accreditation, all of that is so alien. Of course, what happens in the journey is you have friends and mentors. And I think that is the most vital. So who would my mentor have been? My mentor would have been the last principal I worked with. So there was a day when I used to say, oh, I've learned everything I know about education from this person. But one day I woke up and I said, I've learned a lot I know from this person, but today I'm ready to embark on my own journey and move forward from my own experience and from other colleagues. And that's been my broad journey. So with me, I have got Rajshri on my right. Now Rajshri has been in education for 28 years and she's the coach for the senior program managers at Teach for India. She was also the coach at the Indian School Leadership Institute for their national fellowship in the first year. And she's worked in the Indo-Pak border area of Kutch for nearly three years. Before that, she was with the Sadhana School for Differently Abled Children. And she was a teacher with Akanksha before working with Teach for India and has helped design the Akanksha Center curriculum. So as you can see, Rajshri has a vast experience in curriculum development. So she started programs in Akanksha like Service Leadership Program and the Akanksha Teacher Fellowship. And she's designed the curriculum and implementation of sessions for both these programs. She's got a vast experience throughout the country and has supported organizations like Manav Sadhana in Ahmedabad, TBS schools in Madurai and others. So I'm going to ask Rajshri a few questions and maybe uh, we can move on from there. It's always nice to know who someone is. So I know I have given all the things that you did, but personal journeys are more than just tags of where you are and where you work. So would you just begin with sharing your personal journey as an educator with all of us? It's a pleasure to be here sitting in front of all of you. Uh, Mona <coughs> gave this whole history of what I've done. Yes, right now I'm the coach for uh, teach for India and also coach to Akanksha school leaders in Mumbai and Pune. Uh, personal journey to be very honest like Mona herself said that it's uh, it's one thing to come with a lot of credentials and to say like okay here is my journey and I'm going to kind of move ahead. I didn't come with any um, credentials. I did my BCom. I was actually into Bharat Natyam and uh, I, my life was set. Till one fine day, um, coming from a conservative, big joint Gujarati family, at the age of 20, I was told to get married. And I had studied, and uh, I was not even asked a question whether I want to get married. And for me, that was a turning point for education. I started understanding what is the difference between the academics that one is given, the BCom degree I have, and the real education. Education is actually application, critical thinking, which actually I was never exposed to. And I'll give you a wonderful example. A couple of uh, few months back, or year back, whatever, I was in one of the Akamsha schools where a child was um, a first or second grade child was uh, being assessed and was asked, they were taught living and non-living things. And this child was asked, a letter is a non-living thing. It comes from a living thing. What is it? This small child, Didi, wait. Wait, huh, Didi, wait. I'm so 
Didi repeats again. A letter is a non-living thing. Comes from a living thing. What is it? What would be your answer? What would be your answer? What is the teacher expected? What is the answer she expected? Sorry? Sorry? Tree. Can you imagine what the child gave us? What answer did he give? Got it, Didi. It's the postman. <laughs> and for me, that is education. That's application. It's not the correct answer, but it is the answer. The child is actually thinking. Sorry? Correct. How to define correct, right? And yes, so for me, the journey started at that point of time to see today that we are moving into the space where education is beyond just the academics and the degree. It's development, it's critical thinking, it's the values we've exposed to. It's the different to really understand the person in front of you, be it a child. Today I work with the youth and the school principals, who some of them are prob probably older to me. But so what? We are here in a journey to find that I'm not teaching you. We are in this journey together to find the best potential for the child, for the person in front of you. And I think that is true education. It's not something that we need to give. It's something we need to kind of bring out from the other individual. From. And for me, I think the education is all about that. And through my years, uh, be it in Akansha or the various spaces I went to, the only idea is how am I embarking on this education journey? Every few years, there came a time when I said, you know what, I'm so comfortable in Akanksha, TFI, Mumbai, Pune, urban sector, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I can go and do this, you know, somewhere else. I need to kind of have this. I have learned so much I need to give. Then I started moving to villages of India. And I'll just share this again, another story. When I started moving to places and people lovingly welcomed me and I would say, you know what, I can do this, I can do that. And they were so nice. Yeah, yeah, he is so good. After that, they would be very warm, but no feedback, nothing. And I said, then people are very nice. I'm here, I'm telling them. I got a slap on my face one day when I realized, you know what? I actually want to do something, but do I know what they really need? And that's when I started shift in my perception. That it's one thing we want to give this. What does the other person actually need? And are we even looking into that? And I think that's how I perceive that education is, of course, there are things, skills that we learn, but also what is the reality of the other side? So I think I want to stop there. Yeah. No, I think I'll uh, take you a little further because you've talked about a shift and what is correct and what is education. Now let's get down to the actual nuts and bolts. You're training leaders, right? So the, the forum in which education is delivered is not under the trees. It is not a Shanti Niketan model. I'll t right yeah. now we all agree that education is happening in the classroom. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So. Now I would ask you, as a leader and as somebody who works with leaders, how would leaders bring about a change in teaching and learning within the confines of the classroom? Sure. So I think it's a great question because these are very big terms that we use, right? Like change and you know, these things, curriculum. I think when we, it hits the reality, day-to-day -day things, the reality is that there are certain constraints, there are certain things that need to be done, there are structures that need to be put, there are systems that need to be created. The question is, are we caught in those systems? Or are we thinking beyond? So I'll give you an example. The way I look at it is, when I'm, whether it's the children in front or the leaders in front, I think an individual needs knowledge, skills, and mindsets. So a lot of training skills that we develop, the systems like observations, and I, we can get into details after that, but literally observations, feedback, a lot of those things are done on the skill and the knowledge development. But there's a, when you talk about a leader or a mentor, and I believe teachers are also leaders in their classroom, and the school principals are even more so because they are the leaders of the teachers. So I think there are two pieces to it. 
One is clearly classroom where you see what is there and how do you support and give action plans for the teachers or for the students to move on. And there is the other piece which is the human being, the well-being of this person. So you also need to give that enough time and build relationship to understand where this person is. So I think I look at leadership into two folds. One is development in clear knowledge and skills where the structures, the systems, the, the whatever tools you use, you know, curriculum, how can this be passed on? But the other pieces is for me to sit with 30 people and to teach them each individual is unique. So it's great to have these tools, but I should not be so caught up into the tools that I don't even look at the other individual and not understand the real issue or where the problem is. So I think I completely, I feel there are great structures, systems, action plans that you need to give, develop, be consistent, be clearly like focus, uh, clear steps given over there where you keep uh, the opposite person, really see their development in that respect but also not forget the other aspect, which is the human development. And uh, which is a very common thing that I keep talking about is human beings are not machines. Keep input and you get the same output. We give the same input, output is going to be different. So again, the next input should be based on what that output is. And then we cannot have one shoe fits all. So, I don't know, Monika, answer. No, very well, very well, because I think that's absolutely critical because we get lost. Uh, what happens is you get lost in the content that you're going to deliver, you get lost in what they're supposed to do, and you forget that ultimately a good teacher is a good person, and the good person who has the connect with the children and is there because they want to be there, not because it's a convenient Monday to Friday job. Uh, is the one who actually has a transformative impact. So thank you very much.